Long three. Got it! Ooh. Good evening, everybody. Welcome inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud with you here live on Facebook and on Fred TV. Great to have you with us. Another Tuesday <laughs> game here at Durfee. Tonight, boys hoops again. And it is Brockton in town. The big bad boxers are here with a 2-0 record, having already beaten New Bedford and BR this season. Durfee, of course, coming off of last Tuesday's blowout victory against West Bridgewater, which was really quite something here at the Fieldhouse. Haven't seen a blowout like that in some time. Excuse me, that was last Wednesday. 86 to 54, one heck of a game. And, uh, you know, to me, the biggest story is we really got to see some serious depth on this Hilltoppers roster because head coach Joe DeCruz pulled most of the starters um, early in that fourth quarter and the bench came out and put up 21 points in the fourth for the Hilltoppers. They did not let up. We're talking Ariel Pereira got in the mix. Nathan Botello, Janelle Manlove Jr., Owen Nowecki, Giuliani Berrios, Sage Paradise. None of them starters, all of them contributing in that 21-point fourth quarter. The big quarter for Durfee was the third coming out of the half on Wednesday, and that was a 31-point third Ooh. quarter. It was really something to watch, and that really opened up the game. But to see that much of production from the non-starters on this team, um, I know made Coach feel good, um, and it was really good to see, quite frankly. On the other side, the, Bro uh, the Bro Brockton Boxers, again, they're coming in at 2-0. and Big team, as always. Uh, Emmanuel DeBarros, the head coach this year. He's been the JV coach. He is now the head coach as a longtime head coach, Robert Bowen, retired. Great guy. And, uh, you know, always was a pleasure to see him every year, even though the boxers typically had their way in this building. <laughs> coach Bowen, uh, always a class act. So, uh, you know, we congratulate him on his retirement. We wish Coach DeBarros the best here his first season as a varsity head coach for the boxers. And he told me pregame, you know, really in two games, small sample size, but the team contribution has been there up and down the roster. Good ball movement. He says, we got to get out to a good start. He says, you know, the Hilltoppers are no slouch. He says, any conference game is always going to be a challenge. And he said, you know, we have to play like it's a, you know, win or go home situation. So you can expect the boxers, particularly with their size, to be good from outside, you know, in prolific shooting. Durfee has to play physically, according to Coach DeCruz. He said, you know, since there's 15 guys on the roster, he's, he actually told the team, you know, uh, you got to play. If you foul out, next man up. They don't want that, of course, but you want to be able to match the physicality, play to their own pace of play in terms of Durfee's don't let Brockton control the game. That could be said for any opponent, for any team to try to control it. So see how the Hilltoppers do. Again, last week was a real good game for them. Got them, you know, back on above 500 after uh, the loss to BR. So it was a good bounce back, a lot of offense. Um, had a couple good runs in that game. So we'll see if that translates here after you know, six days off without a game. We'll run through the starters for you. For the visiting boxers, number two, Sean Goss. Number three, George Pyers. Number 11, Cameron Montero. Number 20, Michael Curry. And 34, Tyler Victor. For the Hilltoppers, number one, Javon Holly. Number two, Jason Hall. Number three, Josan Sainan. Number five, Janelle Manlove Jr. And number 35, Elijah Coleman. And here we go. Time that perfectly. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Sometimes we're under the gun, you know, depending on JV. You know, sometimes we don't have as much to talk about, but timing there, perfect with our little pregame show. And now 
onto the game. Hilltoppers will start with the ball. They lose it, goes out of play after the tip from the boxers and Durfee will get to inbound once again. Busy week for us here on uh, Fred TV. We'll have our first hockey action tomorrow against Dartmouth. Oh, good kick outside. Well defended there by Montero, but I like the, uh, the idea. Now Hall going for an opening three. It's short and off the rim. Now we'll have hockey tomorrow from Driscoll. Um, you know, we haven't live streamed from Driscoll before. Um, shouldn't have any issues, but uh, you know, untested waters. We're hoping though we'll have, uh, everything should go well for us there off site. And uh, I know the hockey team anxious to start playing you know they've already had two games get postponed so this game was postponed from a week ago as we see Goss picking up our first foul of the game for the boxers on that collision fed to Holly Holly cannot slow up in time for the basket so we'll come back out to the perimeter try to reset the play can't get through and another foul this one on Montero it appears so two in a row for the boxers here in the opening minute yeah, Dartmouth uh, just getting their athletics back um, running today or tomorrow. Tomorrow will be their first action. Again, hockey team. Um, so everybody kind of coming off a little bit cold. They have already played this season, hockey did. They played, uh, I believe they played Stang over at Hetland um, New Year's weekend. Hetland is their home ice, of course, out in New Bedford across from the high school. Nice take to the basket for Montero and he opens the scoring. Uh, and then we're back here again on Friday. More boys hoops on Friday, a rematch of opening night. New Bedford coming to town. Uh, and then another busy week next week, starting off on Monday with a makeup game um, for basketball, girls hoops. Against, uh, Dar yeah, Dartmouth. We have the Dartmouth game uh, for girls hoops on on Monday. So yeah, a busy stretch here, but uh, this is you know what happens in a uh, abbreviated season. And lots of schedule changes. We'll roll with the punches, of course. Holly looking for room, trying to get through. Almost a travel there, and the travel gets called, I believe, on Coleman on the tail end of it. Now we were supposed to have um, hockey on Saturday, actually, Cardinal Spellman, um, and that game got postponed. We do not have a makeup date at the moment, so right now it stands as canceled. It is hopeful that we'll get that one in. And that's according to Athletic Director Brad Buston. Good feed up ahead. Oh, what a block! by Tyler Victor, denying Sainon. Great defense right there from Tyler Victor, number 34. Hilltopper's gonna inbound. Again, from the side. All kinds of traffic there right near, wow. Everybody all bunched up. Now they'll spread out. Hall's got to get it in, redirecting. Gets it to Holly, who comes towards the center line. Nice take from Holly, and he puts the Hilltoppers on the board. Leading scorer on Wednesday had 24 points. 15 of those in the third. He only played three quarters. So he really went off in the second half and then took a seat for the fourth. Coach rested him with the large lead. And um, tell you, if he had played the fourth, probably could have seen 30, 35 points out of him. He really heated up in the second half. Good ball movement from the boxers. Tough shot, good rebound. And they'll kick it back out. Wanting a three, not getting it. Now going out to Goss who wants three and he sinks it. Curry had thought about it. 
couldn't do it. Goss all alone in the corner. And he took the shot and drained it. Sainan, some contact there. And the third foul of this first quarter for Brockton, and this one on Curry. So three fouls on three different boxers. And it'll be free throws for Sainan. Only had one trip to the line last week in the last action. And he was two for two, missing this first shot today. notice we have three officials on the court did not have three for the West Bridgewater game that's because that one was out of conference this was a, a change last year mentioned it on a previous broadcast that conference games would now have three officials quite frankly I like that I think it it really helps particularly because you can now have one on either side and then one down on the baseline you really can spread it out. You get an extra set of eyes. You know, some can say that might hurt you, but a lot of times it's, I think, to your benefit when you can have an extra set of eyes keeping watch on what's going on on the court. That one's skipping through the five hole, and Coleman can't handle it. It'll be a turnover for Durfee. With just the one basket so far, plus the free throw there from Sainan. There's the updated scoreboard. Seven to three, the score. A little delay there. Curry and Durfee. Gonna pick up foul number one, Jay Hall. A bit of a body check there on Curry who was trying to gain the lane. So Durfee's first. Great feed to Curry all alone. Easy basket there. 9-3. Already halfway through this first quarter. Holly. Highly contested. It rolls off the rim. A travel call, so no basket, no foul. Another good take there from Montero. He's done that twice. Lost ball. Manlove can't handle it. Down the other end, off the glass. Goss puts it in. And a timeout called by Coach DeCruz as the Brockton lead swells to 10 with 2.58 to play in the first. Hilltoppers having some difficulty getting shots off down on the offensive attack. Again, Brockton has the size advantage, and I think that's a big part of it. We kind of saw the same issues against BR. BR was a big team as well. You know, again, Durfee lost that one a week and a half ago, 76-46. Uh, so that was a big loss, and you know, not much from the field in that game, I have to be honest. Um, there were a ton of free throws for, for the Hilltoppers in that one, uh, adding it up quickly. 25 free throw attempts. But from the field, really not great. Um, and, and it was for the same reason, you know, trying to gain the lane, trying to get shots off and make them highly contested shots. Um, we didn't see that against, against West Bridgewater. Durfee kind of had their way with the Wildcats. But seeing it here, some troubles early for the Durfee offense. Yeah. 
Holly. Crosses the line, gets it to Hall. Hall kicking it out to Jaden Lewis just into the game. Loose ball taken away again. Brockton with the advantage. Goss couldn't get it to go on the essentially free basket almost here. Good feed to Coleman and Coleman will take advantage and put it in on the other end for the Hilltoppers. Curry to Victor. Victor, fadeaway jumper, no good. Good form there though, I'll tell you. That's uh, kind of an NBA look right there. Holly puts it up, no good. No dice off the glass. Back down very quickly to Goss. Lewis went down looking for an offensive foul. No foul at all. Now the foul called as the basket's going in for Victor. Coleman picking up Durfee foul number two, his first. And it will result in a possible three-point swing here. That was Coleman's first basket. Number of subs, Isaac Lane, Vanilton, Xavier coming in for the boxers as well as Navon Reed and uh, Zeke Johnson. So almost a full switch out aside from uh, you know, Victor who was at the line for Coach DeBarros. 90 seconds to play in the first. Holly goes sailing over the rim. A tough look there from the side with the defender right there kicking it out to Xavier. No good, in and out. It bounces on the inside of the rim. Holly gets the rebound quickly down to Sainon. And Sainon, good hands there. Puts it in. That's his first from the field. Fed down low, kicking it back out to the paint. Xavier there to pick him up, no good. That ball is going to go out of play. Another sub for the boxers, the double zero. Nico Lutz coming in. Fifty-eight point nine seconds. Full reset on the shot clock. And Brockton will inbound down on the offensive attack. Whistle as they hand the ball off, and I think Lewis was too close to defend. Kicking it out to Isaac Lane. Lane didn't find the lane, sends it back. No foul, lots of bodies down low there, and Lutz will kick it back out to Reed, who missed the jumper, now back to Xavier. And it was another fresh 30 seconds as it hit the rim. So Brockton bleeding the clock a little bit. Loose ball, almost kicked. Lewis comes away with it. Three on one for the Hilltoppers. Colin, I believe, an offensive foul. I don't think the basket's going to count because there was a pass by Lewis. Yeah, foul's gonna be on the floor. Kind of a tough, almost a tough break for Durfee, really, because they had the basket. Foul's on Xavier, the fourth for the boxers, but you know, the pass from Lewis is what resulted in it being on the floor. If he had taken the shot and it went in, then you'd see an in one situation here, but or free throws, but he didn't take the shot, he passed it off. I like the selfless basketball. Don't get I'm not faulting Lewis, don't get me wrong here. I'm just saying that it almost kind of hurt Durfee. They do put that one in. That's Coleman. Down the court to Xavier, 10 seconds across to Reed. Blocked, K 
kept in though as he's able to corral it. Five seconds now. Open in the corner down low. Reed, he gets the shot off, it's no good. I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, the Hilltoppers are down by 10. They just went on a, a small but significant four nothing run to end this first quarter. To be down by six instead of 10, you know, I, I think we'll take it. That's um, not a bad place to be. Again, shooting's gotta be better. They did improve in terms of some of the speed, a bit of the press coming out of the timeout at around, um, the three minute mark or so, if memory serves right. I know it was only a couple minutes ago here, but a lot happening in a couple minutes. So, um, but not a bad way to end the first. You gotta continue to build on that now, heading into the second quarter. About a minute left here in between quarters. Durfee didn't use the whole time uh, last week. Actually, really, neither, time, uh, neither team did. Kind of kept it, kept it moving a bit. Down to 60 seconds. Really excited to say I'm going to get to get a sneak peek of our uh, new Fred TV space at the new high school tomorrow, uh, being Wednesday. So. Um, of course, we're gonna be doing what we do best. We'll be filming that and making a small piece um, to air uh, at a later date. We'll, we'll feature it on one of these games as well because again, plenty of time during timeouts, just like we did uh, the first week of the season showing you the renovations here in this building in the field house. Um, you know, we'll have that for you hopefully uh, by the end of the week actually for the boys game on Friday as a feature, but uh, really excited to, uh, you know, the, it's amazing how fast this project these couple years have gone by, quite frankly. And um, exciting that we'll be in this new school before we know it. So stay tuned for that. A sneak peek of the new Fred TV Studios coming soon. Brockton started with possession. Went out of play, but it went out off of Durfee, so the boxers will keep it here. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Evan Massoud with you here on Fred TV. Sam Montero and Jake Fitzgerald running camera this evening. Couple good takes and the boxers still come away. That's a tough foul for Jay Hall. He's gonna pick up his second. You know, those always kind of drive me nuts because I, I know he's reaching in but he had almost all ball there I was actually waiting for a jump ball call and just couldn't get that second hand completely grasped and it does go down so there's a tough foul on the floor there for Hall good I mean good defense from Durfee you know twice a very contested shots Lewis underneath and he's fouled from behind it'll be Brockton's fifth foul. You know, but good defense on that other end. You know, forced Brockton three different times to take shots. Um, two misses thanks to the again the tight defense down low. Lewis in his first trip to the line missing the first Hall out of the game for the time being. Subbing in is Jeriel Rivera. Again, Hall with the two fouls. Lewis missing them both. Tough trip there. Great take to the basket. Going sliding down on the tail end of it there, Isaac Lane. 
and the lead back up to 10 for the boxers. And Durfee was pretty solid from the free throw line last week. Another foul coming. Over 50% last week. Sixth foul for Brockton, the second on Vanilton Xavier, who came in off the bench at the end of the first. So he has not had a lot of minutes in the game, and he's just taken a seat. Sean Goss, one of the starting five, back into the game. And he'll defend Rivera on the inbounding pass. Coleman gets it now to Sainan. And Lewis Collin, they go to Holly instead. Holly wanted to take the three and had to pull back. Loose ball and St. on there to pick it up. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Out to Rivera. Rivera to Holly, four seconds, gotta take the shot. Jumper, no good off the rim. Great rebound from St. on and he's fouled on his way back to the hoop. Seventh foul for Brockton and Durfee will take shots for the remaining 6.22 of this first half. And it's Lutz picking up his first foul. Seen on one for two in one trip to the line. It's the first. Both shots good. And that puts Durfee at 50% in the early going. 19 to 11. Reed passing to Johnson. Really good take as he came flying in. Almost lost it there as uh, Johnson playing tight defense. Holly driving to the basket. Tough shot, but he's able to make it with the shot clock running down. Goss down the other end trying to kiss it off the glass. No good. Whistle coming and a foul called. Durfee's fourth, Coleman's second. Not sure what the Hilltoppers have to do to get a jump ball here tonight, but that was very similar to the foul on Hall. Lane to Reed. Almost slipped there. Reed flips it up, trying to go over the head. Didn't work out like he planned. And Lewis taking it back. Shot clock running down again. Five seconds, now three seconds. Holly loses the ball. One second, and he doesn't get the shot off. No basket. Once again, the defense for Brockton. Too tough. Hilltoppers having a real hard time trying to find space. Three ball put up short off the rim. Reed had the rebound and now Lewis. Lewis loses the ball. Taken by Lutz, the pass, and now setting for a three is Lane. Had all day for it and he overshot it. So the Hilltoppers take it back. Almost stolen again. 
Holly out for three. Tall, I think it was deflected. The putback from Sainon, no good, but it sure looked like Lane might have gotten the fingertips on it because Holly, that ball just kind of died. Eighth foul coming up now for Brockton. Second on Lutz. And before free throws, Sainon's third trip. We'll have a timeout here on the court called by Coach DeBarros. 407 to play in the half, 21-13. You see the boxers meeting in the huddle with their head coach. Not the um, cleanest of second quarters here. Only six points for Brockton, four for Durfee, two coming uh, at the free throw line. But a uh, lot of turnovers, and you can see the physicalities here. Both sides very quick to the ball. Trying to reach in, trying to jar it loose. We've seen that a little more uh, from Brockton's defense. But Durfee is contesting enough shots, and Brockton overshooting a couple, you know, recently some of those threes. So not a very clean second quarter. I think the play was a little bit better, a little more disciplined in the first quarter. Uh, again, small sample size here, but and we have a lot of time left here. We're only halfway through the second quarter, but... Still, lots of turnovers in these first four minutes. <laughs> so Sainan back at the line. He's got five points leading the team. Three of those five coming at the line. They'll look to add. And he will. After missing his first free throw, he's hit the last four. That one short off the rim. Coleman trying to tip it away. Cannot. It's able to be taken by Lane. Lane to Xavier. Now Lutz to Lane. Lane back out to Xavier. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Back out to Lane, wants three, gets three. And Lane lighting it up here in the second quarter. A non-starter here off the bench. Seven points for Lane in this second quarter. And it's a 10 point Brockton lead once again. This is just in, Jake Fitzgerald letting me know here uh, that the Lady Hilltoppers playing at Brockton are leading right now 24-16. Long three put up, no good. That's good news for the Hilltoppers, for the girls who had a tough loss against BR last week, or about a week and a half ago. Real bad blowout, tough loss on the road. Again, you know, BR wasn't much better to the boys here, so <laughs> it's the Trojans tough basketball program, but that's great news. Thank you, Jake. Durfee's fifth foul. First one on Sainon. Three minutes to play in the half. Tough shot. Lutz with the rebound. He can't get it to go. Sainon gets the rebound as both Reed and Lutz unable to get a bank shot there off the glass. Whistle. And Brockton will pick up number nine. We've had five fouls here in the second quarter. And it's on uh, Kruger Jocelyn, number 15. Recently into the game. One and one here as Jerriel Rivera will look to get his first points of the contest. And he misses that first shot. No second shot. Brockton takes it back. And that puts Durfee under 50% now from the line. Lewis will take a seat. Manlove back in. 
And again, a full rotation change here pretty much for the boxers. So Brockton had six players. That's supposed to be a technical foul because the ball was set in play by another official. We ran into this play, ironically, against Brockton, the infamous third game, the playoff game that was here on a coin toss. And that, going back about four seasons, that should have been a tech. Lou, uh, excuse me, Holly takes the shot, no good. Again, shot clock was expiring. Holly tips the pass. We'll take it to the basket. Easy layup on the steal. Nicely done. Out to Goss. Pulls up. Back out to Goss. Sets for three. Rather long, it missed the rim. Sainan weaving his way, loses it, picks it up, and gets it to go. That's his second from the field. Eight points for Sainan leading the team. 24-18 with just over a minute to play. Curry back in. That was a tough shot. Was really almost behind the basket there, kind of leaning back. Those are always so tough. Holly driving the lane. Definitely some contact there. They kick it back out. Manlove took the three, no good. Holly, I think, still looking for a foul. Not finding one. Another good, tough take there from Curry. And it's a four-point swing back the other way. Lead back to 10 for Brockton, 30 seconds to play. Seeing these little bursts of points throughout this first half. Manlove with the basket, his first. Pyers, it's tipped and stolen by Coleman, going to the basket. He'll put it in for two. And four point swing this way. We've <laughs> just gone back and forth. Pair of baskets here, pair of baskets there. Jocelyn travels 1.8 on the clock and the Hilltoppers may be able to go into the half down by just six again. It's gonna be a challenge here with again, just 1.8 seconds and Sainon having an inbound from the other side of the line here. Pass, ball up, well short, but hey, could be worse. Hilltoppers trail 28 to 22 after one half of play here. Again, I say could be worse because they were down by 10 multiple times here in this half. So down by six, deficit still the same after as it was after the first quarter. So got to keep trying to chip away. We'll see if the third quarter yields even better results. You know, the Hilltoppers again, you know, had a tremendous third quarter last week in that game against West Bridgewater, 31 points. I can't remember the last time I saw 31 points in a quarter, but nonetheless, we saw it last Wednesday. So we'll see what Durfee does here coming out of their four minute halftime timeout. We'll see you on the other side with more basketball. Stay with us live on Facebook. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring members of the armed forces. Please assist in the mission to complete our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall. The names of approximately 58,300 American heroes will appear on the aluminum panels. Black granite pavers may be purchased to memorialize those who proudly served. We welcome you to be part of this once in a lifetime project. To make a donation, order an individual paver, and see future announcements, please visit vietnammemorialwall.org or connect with us on Facebook. 100% of your donation goes toward construction and perpetual care of the Healing Wall. 
Committee members expect a formal dedication in the spring of 2021. The spirit of this cooperative effort is of value to us all. Welcome back, everybody, to the Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud with you as we get ready to begin this third quarter here on Fred TV. Great to have you with us. Durfee down by six, and we'll start with the ball. Again, the, the big story really is both sides, quite frankly, need to do better scoring here. And a foul quickly on Holly. The... Uh, The shooting from the field has not been that great, particularly for Durfee. Uh, you know, they left five points on the board at the free throw line, so that's that's always tough. But um, you know, only to be down by only six really is uh, is not bad, considering again, you know, the trouble shooting from the field. Meanwhile, Brockton, everything's been from the field. They've been to the free throw line one time, and that was on an and one. The basket counted, and then they had the extra shot for the foul, and that was a miss. Every other point for Brockton, every point's come from the field. So, except for that one. That's the first free throw made for the boxers. Made by Montero. Jumper no good. So I think, you know, for Dirty, the key is, really, they gotta try to find a way to get more shots from the field and not fall back down by 10 or, or possibly worse. They gotta close the gap here. They've only gotten as close as six over the last eight plus minutes. Man love, travel. Turnover, another big part of that first half. A lot for either side, quite frankly. And then one right there, the travel for Manlove, turns the ball over, jumper no good. Sainon has really had a great first half, leading the team in scoring. Had a number of rebounds, a couple steals. Really had a nice game. Jumper no good, Coleman puts it back. He can't get it to go. 
taken by Holly as it was going out of bounds. So the Hilltoppers with a fresh clock. Jumper from the corner. Hall can't get it to go. The rebound to Goss and will go back the other way. Out to Montero. Floater. That one out to Victor. Victor in the lane. High off the glass, no good. Sainon stripped it away. Ball on the floor and now a jump ball. And it should be Brockton's ball as the Hilltoppers had possession to start the quarter. It is indeed Boxer's ball. Inbounding towards the back to Montero. Three from the point, off the rim, no good for Victor. Loose ball, who wants it? Going out of play. Brockton ball. I think they're saying that Manlove touched it while he was out of bounds. Because it certainly didn't roll out of bounds. Inbounding to Montero. So, Brockton with a second chance here. Sainon. Second foul for Sainon. Second for Durfee here in this third quarter. Montero gets free. Gets the inbound pass again. Curry to the basket, no good. Rebound, gets tipped back to him, and that time he'll roll it in. He's up to eight points. Eight points tied with Sainon for high score tonight between both sides. And Brockton's lead up to nine. Hall gets the pass. Good feed to Coleman. Coleman has it taken away. Curry just ripped it out of his hands. Goss, the feed no good. Sainon with the rebound. Goss was flying down the court. There was no way he was gonna pull up for that shot. And Holly trying to pass underneath to Coleman. And a turnover there. So high flying, fast pace of play, but both sides with no points on those two exchanges. Curry, Jukes left, Jukes right, goes to the basket, no good. Coleman gets the rebound. Victor was there trying to, and that's another turnover and a timeout now called by the Hilltoppers, Coach DeCruz not happy with that sloppy turnover there. That's two in a row, just haphazardly thrown out of play. And every turnover costs you points, and right there you could say, theoretically, could have cost you at least four. So Coach in the timeout, talking to the team, trying to settle the troops. You know, you look at some of the missed free throws. Durfee just four for nine. That's, you know, below 50%. Hilltoppers not usually below 50%. Some of these turnovers. I mean, the Hilltoppers are very much in this game despite all of that, despite the missed free throws, despite the turnovers. Nine points is really not a huge deficit. The thing is, is you, there's really not much more room for error as we're coming up on the halfway mark of the third, you know, and 12 total minutes to play. Now you're getting into crunch time. You don't have much more room for error or sloppiness if you want to climb back in this game. Sainon runs into Holly. Hall almost loses it. Could have been close to a travel. Coleman gets the rebound and a nice put back. He's up to eight points. 
Durfee's first point of this third quarter, coming here almost halfway through it. Right there, those two from Coleman. Dropping back is Pyers. Fed to Curry. And a travel called on Curry, not liking the call. And a technical foul. I could see that coming a mile away. Curry did not like the call on the travel and he went right at the official. It's just not a smart move. <laughs> it's not gonna win you any prizes, I can tell you that. Holly will go to the line, his first trip to the free throw line and he'll get two free shots. And he hits the first. This is the second, and the Hilltoppers will get the ball. Man love inbounds to Holly. Drive in the lane, high off the glass, and he's fouled, caught by the official as he goes out of bounds. And Holly will go back to the free throw line. Foul number three for the boxers. And it's the third on Lutz who just came back into the game. Two more free throws for Javon Holly. That one, nothing but net. Why the swoosh makes a real, real pretty sound, doesn't it? <laughs> when you don't hit that bat, just that little. <laughs> Second shot miss again. So Holly just two for four, but he cuts the lead to five. That's the closest Durfee's been since way back in the first quarter. Lutz takes the three, no good. The rebound on the other side for Johnson. Now a three on this side at the point for Xavier. Big time three right there. He took a couple that he missed in off the bench in that second quarter and now cashed in for the three ball, 34-26 the score. Holly fouled, no shot of course. Clearly on the floor, Brockton picking up their fourth. They've been racking them up here and Lutz picking up his fourth. Again, off the bench in limited time so don't know if he's gonna stay out there much longer. Manlove out of the game for the moment as uh, Jaden Lewis back in for Durfee, number five. Inbounding to Coleman, getting it to Sainon. Getting ready to sub in is Tyler Victor, assuming he's gonna be coming in for Lutz as coach was just informed of Lutz's fourth foul. No basket that time for the Hilltoppers. Victor, uncontested three off the back of the rim. Lutz with his height going for it, goes tumbling down a tough collision. Slap at Lewis, that should have been a foul. Now he goes down and he will get the foul there. But it should have been one on the back, on the back end before Lewis went down. Lutz is out of the game for the time being. No foul, just the turnover. What is going on? No, no um, questioning by the Durfee coaching, but I mean, I could hear the slap from up here. It sure appeared that Lewis was fouled. Spin move in the paint, no good. The rebound to Coleman, out of play. Durfee will have it. Two thirty-one to play in the third. Ball to Holly. You know the shooting has been tough from the field for Durfee and no threes for Durfee through more than two and a half quarters as well. Actually, and really, I mean, not much for Brockton. They've hit three of them. So not a lot of outside shots for either side. As the boxes pick up foul number five, the first for Isaac Lane. 
fresh 30 on the shot clock. Hilltoppers will inbound as that was of course on the floor. Hall looking for some help. Gets it into Holly. Into the paint. Throws it up. No good. Into Coleman. Quick inbound there from Hall. Now Sainon with it. Bounced it to Hall. Mishandled it for a second. Has to kick it back out to Lewis. 15 on the shot clock. Lewis out to Coleman. Now to Hall. Hall looking for the three. And he drains it. First one from downtown. Hall's first points of the game. And it's 34-29. Durfee picking up foul on the floor. Away from the ball, Lewis is first, team's third. Back to Victor. Now Reed, Reed going to the basket. Good 4-2. Less than 90 seconds here in the third. Hilltoppers down seven. Holly with the quick jumper off the mark, a little long off the back of the rim. No good there from Johnson. Sainon with the ball, two on one as he steams ahead. And he'll put it in off the glass. Sainon with 10 points for Durfee. Under a minute. Reed looking for room. Gets a shot off and it does go. Tough shot for Navon Reed. 30 seconds. On a five second differential. Hall wants another three, it's no good. Coleman trying to get the rebound, he can't. Shot clock off, 20 seconds for the boxers to try to grab some extra points, up by seven. As we near the end of the third. Three ball put up. Risky move by Lane, he's missed a number of them. Sainon can't put it in off the glass, it's out of play. And Brockton with the ball with 2.3. Letting it fly off the glass was Xavier. So many points left on the board. Really for both sides, I, I mean, you know, just a 10 point third quarter for the boxers. Jerfee with nine, this is the first time they've trailed by more than six points at the end of any quarter. But again, not very clean basketball here. Particularly in this third quarter, you know, the shooting, Durfee had a couple more from the field. A couple missed free throws as well. Again, still below 50% from the line. Brockton only got their first free throw here in this third quarter. But I've said it before, I'll say it again. One of these teams, you know, Brockton's got the advantage because, of course, they're up by seven. But it's still anybody's game right now. The Hilltoppers, they can put a run together here. It's not like Brockton's lighting it up with their shooting either, quite frankly. We'll add up some of these totals here. The For uh, Holly, he's got eight, three for Hall. 10 for Sainon, two for Manlove, and quietly, eight points for Coleman. He's had points in every quarter. 
for Brockton, really spreading it out. Goss with five, two for Johnson, five for Montero, eight for Curry, seven for Lane, three for Xavier, four for Reed, and two for Victor. And that's, they came in as advertised. The boxes did, we were told, I was told, uh, by head coach DeBarros that they really do spread out the offense. Everybody's gonna get into the book or many of the players will get in the book in terms of individual points. And uh, sure enough, eight players with points. For Durfee, just five with points. And it's Sainon leading the team. Whistle sounds in the fourth quarter about to begin here at Durfee. 38-31, boxers over the Hilltoppers after three. Hilltoppers will start with possession with some work to do. Hall will inbound and get us started, finding Holly. And a quick pass. Even though uh, free throws have not been particularly sharp tonight for Durfee, um, Brockton just two fouls away. Great basket from Coleman. Brockton just two fouls away and put Durfee into bonus. You take any free shots you can get at this point. from Sainon, <laughs> from behind, gets the feed, almost a travel, can't put it up on this end, that would have been a sweet transition, let me tell you, but that was one heck of a block from Josan Sainon. Wow. Travel, hanging on the rim, and another tech, absolutely. Absolutely. Hanging on the rim was Lane. So in addition to the turnover on the travel, the Boxers hit with their second technical foul. And that doubles on the team total as well. So Durfee into bonus now. And the timeout for DeBarros and his Boxers. So two free throws coming for the Hilltoppers, uncontested and they'll get the ball with a chance, a chance, they could tie this game with this one possession. They hit two free throws in at three. Yeah, I might be asking a lot on a night where shooting hasn't been the best, but needless to say, that's the facts. The Hilltoppers could tie this game up right now. Holly back to the line, two for four. On the night, both trips coming in the third. First shot for Holly. Hits it. In all three trips for Holly, he's hit the first. Second shot good for Holly. It's a three point game. Now Hall will inbound. They get it to Holly. Foul on the floor. And it'll be the eighth for Brockton. And this is what I'm saying, Hilltopper is gonna go to the line from here on out. One and one, Holly right back to the line after just making two in a row. The foul is on Montero. He had one way back in the first and now picking up his second here a minute into the fourth. Look at that thing spin. <laughs> wow. I thought it was going to come back out. First one good. Holly will get the second shot. And he makes it. Four in a row for Holly. And it is a one point game here in the fourth. Jerfy has come out on a 6 nothing run in the fourth. 
Grabbed out of the air by Reed. I thought they were going out to Victor, and now they get it to him, and that's in and out, no good. Coleman, I believe, getting called on a foul as he came flying in and made contact with Victor. Excuse and by the way, that was Xavier on the on the three ball there. So please, excuse I believe I had said Victor by accident. Xavier took the shot. Victor ran into, or Coleman rather, ran into Victor. He picks up his third foul, the fourth for the team. Inbounding to Goss. Back to Xavier and now to Montero. Lutz is back in, the double zero with four fouls. Kind of surprised, that's a good take to the basket. Loose ball, Coleman will pick it up and the Hilltoppers can try to take the lead. Underneath, Coleman puts the Hilltoppers ahead. 12 points for him, and Durfee leads 39-38. An eight nothing run to start the fourth. In two minutes time, taken away, Lutz leveled. Sainan to Hall, to the basket, count it. Kidding me? 10 nothing run for Durfee. The JV team cheering, foul called, coach wanted to travel, but Durfee's gonna get tagged with their fifth foul. Second on Javon Holly, And that will halt Durfee's momentum to a dead stop. Two shots. First one misses. I believe that's Reed at the line. Yes, it is. Number 33, Navon Reed. This is just his first trip to the line. Missing the first shot. Here comes number two. You know, such a small sample size. Only four free throws. This one being the fifth for Brockton all game long. It shows you how you know Durfee has had a lot of turnovers, but Foul-wise, they've been pretty disciplined. Two for five at the line is Brockton tonight. After that last one made, it's at 41-39. Holly gets the long pass. Back out to Lewis and thrown away, but it was tipped by Goss, and that might be why Lewis missed it. There was deflection, which we're seeing, there, we're seeing that there was. Paul will inbound 18 on the shot clock for Durfee. Coleman gets the inbounding pass as he came in around Pyers to free himself up. Now to Hall. 10 seconds. Holly almost lost it. Three seconds for Holly. He's got the ball, puts it up, no good. Does hit the rim, the rebound to Lutz, and Brockton has it. Good take, but no dice. Hall, oh, behind the back. Two on one. Hall can't get it to go. Lutz has gone down to the court multiple times, and he is now down and grabbing, his, grabbing at his knee. Still down on the court. As Lutz is tended to. There was a foul, by the way, as well, down on the other end of the court here. It was the ninth for Brockton, the second on Goss. And that happened while Lutz was down on the court. Again, he's had it rough off the bench. A lot of fouls, and he's had a number of collisions. So right now, the injury timeout. Durfee trainer Kelly Mahoney tending to Lutz. Last update from New Bedford. 
we're actually getting from the comment section here on the Facebook live stream. So we thank you very much. Um, the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers still leading New Bedford. 41-34 late in the game. But I said leading New Bedford, leading Brockton. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already thinking about Friday, I guess. I don't know. We got a lot to go here tonight. <laughs> Lutz up, but hopping out of play, not a good sign. He was grabbing his knee. Hopefully he didn't blow anything out. We wish Lutz the best. Hall will take two shots. First trip to the line for Jay Hall, and he gets it to bounce in. Second shot made as well. 43-39. Two possession game now for Durfee. Their largest lead, four points. Again, they've been down by as much as 10 multiple times. They went on a 10-0 run to start this fourth quarter and erased the deficit. Sixth foul for Durfee. It's the third on Sainon was on the floor, so no free throws again for Brockton. Swatted by Lewis, it goes out of play. We'll do it again. Tipped from behind by Coleman, but still kept by Brockton. Oh, long three, and it's off the front of the rim. Xavier trying for the big shot, but even beyond NBA range there, came up short. Lewis to the basket, no good. The rebound for the boxers. This time it's Lane who got hit with a technical foul back into the game. Loses it, stripped, out of play. Jerfy ball. I had to tell you, yeah, I mean, the shooting, of course, to come out on a 10 0 run is, is great for the Hilltoppers, but the defense has been stellar in the second half, much sharper than the first half. Jerfy's been quick to the ball, they have been playing physical. Four minutes to go here, 4.06 to be exact. Hilltoppers still up by four, would like to add to it on this possession, give a little more breathing room. Holly driving the lane, it's off the bottom of the rim. A little too much steam there, fed to the corner. Now back out to Xavier, looking for help. Almost taken away, no shot. Kick ball, a turnover. I thought it might have hit the foot. It happened so fast, I didn't even get to spit out the words. Sainon to the hoop. Six point game. 12 points for Sainon. Put up, no good. Lewis with the rebound. Crosses center court. Out to Sainon. Jumper. No good. Goss sets for three on the far side. No good in and out, right into the hands of Hall. Keeps it after he was almost stripped. And a whistle, 3.03 to play. Hall keeping it. Hall, this, one of the star running backs for the football team, 1,000 yards last year. He knows how to keep that ball tucked. 45-39, Hilltoppers lead it here late in the fourth.
Both teams break the huddle. You see Lutz on the far sideline walking around. Kelly Mahoney still with him. Puts his shoe back on, which actually makes me wonder if it was maybe his ankle and not his knee. Hall will inbound. We get it to Holly, and he loses it on the inbounding pass. Goss can't get it to go. Two tries, can't get it to go. Out of play. Should be Durfee ball. Tremendous effort by Montero, but he fell out of bounds with possession. So once again, Durfee's defense, despite the turnover, coming up big. Pass to Sainon. Oh, he can't get it to go, but they kick it out to Holly. Holly for three. Yes! Knocks it down! Nine point lead for the Hilltoppers with two and a half to play. Take it. On the steal, Holly wants a couple more. Flips it up for two. Talk about closing out a game. Foul, two, point, uh, two shots coming for Lane. But a huge five point swing right there. Hall picking up his third. It's Durfee's seventh. And that one will dribble in for Lane. His first trip to the line. Timeout for Brockton. In two minutes and four, excuse me, we have two minutes, 14 seconds left to go. In five minutes and 46 seconds, Brockton still with zero points from the field in this fourth quarter. Both their points coming at the free throw line. Ironically, when you consider that, they had three free throws in all of the first three quarters. They, this is now their second trip to the line here in the fourth. And just the two points. It was 38-31 at the start of this quarter. Durfee now leads 50 to 40. They've put up 19 points to Brockton's two. An incredible turnaround here for the Hilltoppers. Talk about turning the tables. And I mean, really, it's the defense. Yes, Durfee has shot from the field here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 13, from the, 13 points from the field. Six for six at the free throw line here in this fourth. That's a big deal as well, because again, they were not shooting well at the line earlier in the game, fluttering just below 50%. But, you know, combine that with the defensive effort, just tremendous. Still a lot of time though, not over yet. Two minutes is a long time. Foul right at the emblem. Hilltoppers by nine. That's the 10th foul. So Brockton's maxed out. Third foul for Montero. Second in this quarter. Sainan will take two. He is, let's see, four for six at the line. Has not been to the free throw line since the second quarter. These are big shots now. It's money time. Hits the first one. And the lead is back to 10. Both shots made Sainon with a 14 point night and six for eight at the line. Goss looking for room. Gets it out to Xavier. And that is good. Just his second from the field. Had a three ball back in the third.
Griffey calling timeout. The Hilltoppers couldn't get it out of the Brockton zone. And it'll stop the clock with a buck 42 to play. Well, mentioned it earlier, a uh, busy week this week and next. These, these next uh, eight to 10 school days will be busy for us. Uh, tomorrow we have our first hockey action from Driscoll. Durfee versus Dartmouth. Then on Friday we have more boys hoops. New Bedford coming to town. Next Monday, makeup game. Girls basketball against Dartmouth. <laughs> then we have on Tuesday, girls hoops against BR. And then Friday, boys hoops again, the 29th, here at the Fieldhouse against Dartmouth and hockey on Saturday the 30th against BR. So a big stretch here, busy stretch. As we have hit pretty much already, it's amazing here, January 19th, we're already halfway through the season essentially. This abbreviated winter sports season here in 2021. Good feed to Coleman, Coleman can't get it to go. Got his own rebound, tons of pressure. Loose ball, it's taken away. Goss comes away with it, fed down the court to Lane, who takes a quick three, and he knocks it down. Fifty-four, forty-six. Three ten left in the girls' game, 48-46, Durfee. So the Lady Boxers making a bit of a run. We apologize again. Uh, you know, the Wi-Fi actually not fully set up yet in this new building, so we're still working off the hot spot. So, yes, we did drop there for a moment. Our apologies. Needless to say, the Hilltoppers grabbed an extra basket, 54-46. An eight-point lead with under a minute to go as Durfee with one of the most impressive fourth quarters in recent years. Right now, a 23-point fourth quarter for the Hilltoppers. Hard to believe they were down by seven less than eight minutes ago. Fourth foul on Montero. Three of those four coming here in this quarter, maxed out on the team level. Two shots coming for Coleman, his first trip to the line. He's got 12 points in the game, that one well short. Two in the first, uh, excuse me, four in the first, two in the second, two in the third, and four here in the fourth. So a couple baskets here and there throughout the game gives you a nice double-digit total for the night. Second shot missing as well. So 0 for 2 that time. That breaks up Durfee's 8 for 8 here in the fourth. A long three for Xavier. And another timeout. 54 49 the score. That one was from NBA range. A huge three. And it, the threes are saving Durfee. Excuse me, saving Durfee, saving Brockton right now because they've had two of them over these last couple minutes. Able to cut the deficit back just enough, just a little bit. Thirty five point five seconds. And a five point Hilltopper lead. Durfee will inbound. They'll have the ball, it appears. Say nine. Full court press, Hall racing to get across the center line. 
almost almost travels. Now Sainan is fouled. That took 13 seconds off the clock. And Sainan back to the line. Two shots. First foul on Reed. Basket's good. Second shot missing. Fifteen seconds to play. Reed feeding it out to Goss. No good. Kicking it out now to Xavier with five seconds. That's no good. Durfee with great defense. 3.2 seconds. As we get close to signing off, girls are down by two points here. 50-48 on the road. The Hilltoppers! I don't want to say epic, but really, this was one heck of a comeback. Wow. This just goes to show you folks that you got to play the whole game. An incredible fourth quarter for the Hilltoppers. 24 points. They were down 38 to 31 after three. And they come back and they win it 55 to 49. Yeah, there was some much better offense in the fourth, better shooting, better free throws, but the defense was tremendous for the Hilltoppers in this one. Great team effort. I can't remember the last time they beat Brockton in this building because I can tell you right now, I, I don't recall it being on my watch at least, and this is my, gosh, this is my ninth season. So, um, you know, I have to, I'd have to go back and look through all my books to see, but I don't think it's happened here since I've been here at least. So a huge win for Durfee. They are now 3-1. and one. They'll host New Bedford, a team they've already beaten once this season. New Bedford coming to town Friday. All right, fun one at Durfee tonight. Hilltoppers win it 55 to 49. I'm Evan Massoud saying so long. We'll see you tomorrow for hockey.